I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Council, additions to the agenda under new business. Um, A will be animal permits. And B is a change order for well set. Change order means we have um, Robert called in yesterday. He is sick, so he is absent. Change order means so we want to address this. And that's going to come straight out of people's money. I move that we uh, excuse his absence. Do you know this? Sorry. Okay, move and second to excuse Robert's absence. All in favor say aye. 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 And any opposed? Motion carries. All right. Um, approval of December 26, 2023, regular meeting minutes. Well, I have something on there. At the last meeting, I requested that the council minutes be corrected. And I mentioned a number of things, and then in general, I stated some things that were not really supposed to be on the meeting minutes of the town of Lynn. Um, the clerk did do a couple of the changes, but Go ahead and make this for the council members of what it was that I was trying to get to. So that's one, two, thirty two minutes. Uh, the Question. 
Item B, the fire station agreement, stated that Paula Bell had used the previous five-year agreement, blah, 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 and nothing has been heard back yet. My question was, did the council vote to approve a five-year agreement in 2023 for the, the fire department that I wasn't aware of? Mayor? Um, officially, that was an agreement proposal between myself and Sal when she was actual uh, secretary. Okay. And she just never got around to doing it from her end. So I was just taking her kind of proposed suggestion because I assumed that the fire department wanted, instead of doing a year after year after year after year, they were wanting the um, more um, five year agreement. Okay, so the council didn't didn't move the council on. did I just presented it to the fire department because the fire department needed to present it back to us. Okay, so it, there was no action taken by a council. It wasn't council approved. So um, item B, fire station agreement. Um, Mayor Paula Bell is pursuing that agreement would be okay, but the council needs to vote on that? No, not until it comes back from the fire department. Well, if we're offering them a five-year no. agreement at a certain dollar amount, the council should be approving no. the five years and the certain dollar amount. It would be coming from the fire department. It's always come from the fire department to us. That's their contract with us. Does the town own that building? Yeah, but it's the fire department service. But it's the town's building and we hold the contract for the fire department, correct? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, so... Um, but I was just going by what Val and I had three years ago started talking and okay. then she just never presented it. And then um, Kevin was in agreement way back when, way Verbally. back when. Okay. All right, so Paula Bell is pursuing this arrangement, would be fine. The mayor is pursuing this arrangement. It may totally all change when the fire department comes back at us with their agreement. Sure. And then we bring it to a meeting and we can cash it out, whatever, whatever you get back. Okay, so that change would be item B, fire station agreement. Mayor Paula Bell is pursuing this arrangement. And then the next page. Um, so the discussion of ordinance language, uh, vehicle and recreational vehicle storage. You read the purpose section out loud, period. Discussion ensued, period. We don't need to say discussion was had about vehicle storage. Just simple terms, discussion ensued, is, is the proper way for that to happen. Uh, and then down under financial committee report, there was a list of pending invoices dated December 5th to December 26th totaling 14,000 blah, blah, blah. Um, the, the comments made by Councilperson Myra Horton and the comments made by Councilperson Jim Dorshak are not a part of the business that was done. Those are conjecture and, and they're not appropriate for town minutes. So I scratched out all of the conjecture and blah, blah, blah. And then went down to Councilperson Jim Dorshak made a motion to approve the pending invoices because that was the business that was done. And the motion carried. Okay, and then other business, public comment. Um, Jackie Leonard, elections administrator from Adams County, was present to administer the oath of office to newly elected council member, strike the S, Jim Wiedemann, period. Council member Jane Schmunk will be sworn in on January 2nd, 2024, at the Adams County Elections Office, period. Mayor Paula Bell told the council there was a statement about somebody saying something that was a racial slur. 
that is not appropriate, that is a, an opinion, and um, you can put on there that you that Mayor Bell told the council, discussion ensued, it doesn't have to state everything that was said. This is a record of the business that was done, not what was said by people, not opinions or conjecture. So that is my proposal to the council to accept the minutes as I corrected them for the December 26, 2023 meeting. Well, with the uh, financial committee report and yes. the uh, paragraphs that you have needed, uh, important information that is uh, headed towards that transparency statement. Um, it's okay for them to make that statement, but there's a lot of, I don't like this person, so I'm saying no, that, and this um, person interrupted, and we are not a part of that. No. The minutes are supposed to reflect the business that was done, and, that is and people that came to the meeting got that information, people that watched it on YouTube got that information, but it's not appropriate for town council minutes. Um, I disagree totally because it's part of transparency for the um, minutes to be designated. Is that paragraph? I disagree, and this is my motion to accept the minutes as are corrected by what I passed out. Is there a second? Okay, it's been moved and seconded to uh, accept December 26 as uh, corrected from uh, Jamie's wordings. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. December 9, 2024, regular meeting minutes. like to propose a correction down under the paragraph about well six rates. I would like to scratch well six rates because it isn't only well six rates. Okay, Jamie, with that, that is exactly what the agenda had on well six rates, ordinance 2401. But That's we confirmed during meeting. that meeting that it wasn't only well six, it was also well nine. No, so I don't want not. it to be confused. No. Well nine has got contract. No, we had this discussion twice during the meeting, and I, and I, and I asked that. that there be a letter of intent to confirm that Ordinance 2401 includes both water outlets at well six and also well nine. Is that correct? But that wasn't part of any discussion as far as what the, was on the agenda. It was all a part of the discussion about that ordinance, and that's why I asked for there to be a letter okay, so to confirm, if, if you and then you explained that there were it's a contracts. Contract. And we said, well, I would like for, it, for this to be put in the minutes, included in the minutes, the intent that well nine is at that rate unless the council approves the other, you know, another contract. 
if you bring something to us and this company wants to use it for this long and whatever, we can approve it at that time, but anything taken out of that well until we approve some kind of a contract would be at the regular tank water rate. And that well does not have the capabilities for anybody to drive up to, hook a hose to, and I understand that. So that's why it is a constant contract for contractors to use and um, have the uh, um, well nine separate from well six. It's a total different setup. Yes, I understand it's totally different, but we want the minimum rate to be applied to all of our wells unless something's brought before the council and we approve it for a different rate. Okay. That's what so, we discuss. All right, get your pencil sharp. Okay. Well nine. <coughs> all electricity is paid by the contractor. Yeah. There is no electricity paid at well six. The fee for water and the property use is $125 per month throughout the term of the project. There's $3 per 1,000 gallons. The contractor provides the backflow prevention device uh, required by DOH, Department of Health Standards. Gallons or cubic feet? Gallons. Okay. All operational and maintenance repair costs are paid by the contractor. And that is what was the last two contracts contracts that were made up for the specific projects that were with Well 9. So I'm thinking that Well 9 is more than Well 6. Yes, but we wanted to set rate. a minimum so that it couldn't be less than the Well no, 6. No, it would part. never be less because you've already got a contract set, contract set, contract set, and it's increased through the year on projects or whatever. But the contractor is, is paying out more yeah. at that well nine location. So that's why I am saying well nine is not part of the well six um, rate. That ordinance said all spigots and what was the other term? Stand pipes or something. Stand pipes, that's it. Thank you. All spigots and standpipes. No, hydrants and standpipes. Hydrants. That's it. So that's to me, that means that. all. Okay, that that well nine it didn't exist uh, until it, it, we bought the property for the wastewater treatment plant. Well, but the thing is, is well six is separate in everybody's minds, right, Mike? And you, when you were thinking about that, trying to work with that, you had. Just well six in mind. Yes or no? I I believe so. Yeah, but I didn't. Yeah. But we talked about one line at the last meeting. Yes, we did. And we said that it was to be included. Yes, we did. Can you vote? So your document is. Um, incorrect. So what? Your document is incorrect that you approved last time. Because what was approved did not say specifically well one, well two, well six. No, it well said nine. all items and standards. And there again, that's not a standpoint. So. Well, neither are the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> I questioned and looked up definitions on those two. But the town has considered that to be what it is referring to. So to be transparent and uh, consistent with everything, what do you want to do, Mike? Do you want to retract what the ordinance that you've already approved of as far as the language goes? Because right now it is incorrect according to what's on the table. It doesn't say well six on it. It just says all standpipes and my previous meeting uh, excuse me. suggest that no, we're, we're not in a our contract to be added. So um, it says withdrawal from hydrants and standpipes. 
from withdrawal from hydrants and stand points. Pipes. From withdrawal from hydrants and stand points. It doesn't say anything about well set. Or well nine. Or, or well nine. nine. But that's why I wanted a letter of intent to confirm that that covered both of well six and well nine. I, I stated that really clearly. And then you did say, well, that's on a that's on a contract usually. I said that for a minimum, we discussed the minimum, it should be this unless we approve a different contract for that. Yeah. That's why I would buy not. So now all of a sudden, anything. after all the years, now we're we're concerned about well nine. We just we never you're the only one that's ever rented it out to to people. I but didn't deal with that when I was the mayor. But it was there made available. So Mike, you got interrupted. So so what we need to do is we need so we have to retract what we've already put in with well six if we want to add well nine and, and or to say well six and well nine then. You don't have to retract, you can amend. 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 All you do is amend. Right. So we need to amend it and add well nine in there. If that is what the council totally wants to do. Okay. I'd prefer that it said well six, both outlets, and well nine. Because there are two different things at the well six location. Right. How about if you say potable and non potable? Because you say that too. Well, seven is and eight is not part of well six. Or you could say all wells. Well, the ones that are currently available to be used for tank water and aren't plumbed to the town right. itself. Right. None of the other ones are, are going to be able to use like both those, just sides. Six and nine. And so I just I just wanted to be clear. Okay, now back keep that on your mind, never mind. Um, back to your minutes it is on the table to uh, approve. Oh, I thought you were adding something. No. <laughs> no, we're we're still trying to approve January 9th, 2024 meetings. Minutes. So what you want to do is you want to amend ordinance 1401 to say well six both outlets are audible or not audible and one. Okay, but we are concentrating on January 9th, 2024, meeting minutes. That's what I'm reading. Okay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so part of my proposal is that we change item A to say well six, both potable and non potable, and well nine, ordinance 2401, and change that or add that to the ordinance, however we need to do it, to make it official. Okay. Um, okay. And then there was discussion about attaching the letter of intent concern on well nine. Um, Mayor Bell explained that well nine operated under contracts, different contracts. All I asked for is that there was a letter of intent to confirm that the ordinance 2401 includes both water outlets at well six and well nine. Those were the words that I used during the meeting, basically. So. That was not translated into minutes. So now you want word for word? I would like to said. reflect what was said, what was said. In, by a council person asking for a letter of intent mm -hmm. to confirm that Ordinance 2401 includes both water outlets at well six and well nine. The letter of intent is what I'd asked for. Okay, is there anything else, Council? That covers it. Um, down under 
Item C, council input ordinance language. Mayor Bell explained that this is Sorry. <laughs> right. Language for the council to consider. We don't need to say this is paperwork that has been distributed before Christmas. See, you got to shorten up things. Things aren't supposed to be what was said. It's supposed to be about just the business that was done. And when a council member asks you to note something in the minutes, then you note that. But otherwise, we don't have to have a lot of conjecture and explanation that something was passed out before Christmas. So I'd like to have... Paperwork has been distributed before Christmas and was just. Just strike it out and before that put is. Um, vehicle registration, vehicle storage, discussion ensued. We don't need the rest of, of the comments. B. Discussion ensued. Take out, there was discussion about a possible ordinance. Just discussion ensued is all that needs to be done for the minutes. It's a record of what was done, not what was said. And then C, um, there was discussion of who administration would be due to the qualifications, blah, blah, blah. Discussion ensued. It doesn't have to be spelled out. People can look it up in the video if they really want to know what was said. They can attend the meetings if they really want to know what was said. It was just a discussion. Okay, and then under new business, um, there was statements about uh, the, the Reservoir 3 um, due to lightning damage. This would be paid by insurance. I would like you to add the town's insurance. It just clarifies it, the town's insurance. Where? At the bottom of the page. Due to lightning damage, this would be paid by, and I just said the town's insurance. Um, the chicken permit on the next page. We don't need it stated that the chicken permit for this address has been paid for. If it's brought to the council, it should have been paid for first. So just scratch that the permit was paid for and say that there was a motion made and we voted on it and approved. No, what happens if I have a, a, a chicken permit and um, <coughs> I pay for it and then the council says, no, we don't want that permit to be granted. Can you so give then me that it's already been money? paid. And then you got somebody mad because you, you said that to they were To file the permit. permit, they have to pay the fee. Okay. It states that. Okay. Well, um, if you want to know what kind of chickens they have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll Looks a lot like a rooster. <laughs> um, oh boy. <sighs> I'm sorry, but I really would like to get the minutes to be professional. <laughs> okay. Okay. Financial committee report. The statement was there was a discussion about what some of the warrants and pending invoices were for. I think that's correct grammar. Um, just say a short discussion ensued. A discussion ensued. You can use that for so many things. And, uh, further down under executive session, um, after having and interview on Friday with the council members, Jim Wiedemann and Robert Dew and Mayor Paul, Paula Bell, sorry. Um, it was recommended for him to be hired. I would like that to say the mayor recommended Peter Bolton to be hired for the position number four, because it's position number four. We had the number four. It was not by recommendation of the council or anybody else. Mayor's job, she made the recommendation for her to be stated correctly. Okay, that's it. So I make a motion to accept the corrected minutes of the items that I've stated for the January 9th meeting. Second. Yeah, get somebody in here that writes a lot faster than I do. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to uh, accept January 9, 
2024 corrected council meeting minutes. All in favor say aye. aye. And any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, council. Um, in unfinished business, item A, um, I need to apologize because uh, at the last meeting, I held up my copy blue and all of your copies were white and your copies were in a special envelope that was specific given to you separately. So that's my apologies. So um, the input for the uh, ordinance language, starting off with the vehicle and recreational vehicle storage. Any uh, thoughts further that you have studied with or uh, you know, out, one in. And remember, this is just proposal. Right. I'm still going to need time to go through this. I was, <clears throat> I went through a song. Not as much as I need to, because from everything I've read on right now, I really don't agree with a lot of what this has to say about how you're going <clears> to, <throat> how we can, you know, say Joe Blow over here, or whatever, has five recreational vehicles parked in front of his house. They're all licensed and everything. And I don't mean trailers per se, I mean, that can be anything. Obviously, recreational vehicles are recreational. And I didn't, maybe I missed it, I didn't see it in an actual number as far as if it was saying like four or five or two or one. Did, there, did I miss the number of, huh? It's up to the council. Okay, but as far as like, or telling someone, you know, they can't park their RV in front of their house, to me, I don't necessarily agree with that. Well, can I just speak on that part? I pay taxes just as much as ordinance number the other one fire in here. Ordinance number 167, section 6 states unlawful spelling It shall be unlawful for the owner, operator, or leasee of any trailer, coach, or any person in possession of to park overnight or cause or permit the same to stand or to be upon any public street, avenue, park alley, or other place. And then the established fire zone of the town's wind. So if it says so that, why do you... So I have a four-wheel drive pickup so you can tell me I can't park that in front no, of my house this either. Is that could be a wreck. That could be an RV. Well, that's... This is the original ordinance that was passed in 1948. All right, well, now it's on 1948. Well, yeah. that's what we're doing, Mike. We're trying to update. Right, right. I get that. Like I said, I need to go through this some more. Yeah. I'll leave, right. leave it to that. And it does state in here up to three vehicles. That's what you propose. Okay. So exactly what do you mean and how are we going to get people to do this? Designated driveway on an approved, durable, uniform surface. Right that is designed to retain surface water on site and without causing impact to neighborhood prop neighboring properties. The, the other cities and towns put that in so that you just don't park it in the dirt. It has to be a designated spot. You can't have it here today and over there tomorrow. You're supposed to try to keep it in, in one spot that, you know, so it says it has to have a durable, uniform surface. What is right. that? Mean? That can be anything from gravel to concrete. It's just that what it does is it shows that that's where you can park these, these units. And you really don't want to park them in front of, on the property in front of the house because there's setback rules that we already have in zoning. Mm -hmm. So you like to have the, the RVs or 
motorhomes or whatever back behind that to keep it. So when you look down the street, you're just going to see these things sticking out. So you're talking even with the house. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why the fence law is when you even get to the, the end house. of the house, you get down to three feet. Can I ask a question? Who decided we needed these extra rules? It's just updating. It's nothing extra. Well, the wording is certainly different, so that's extra. So who decided, Paula, that we needed to do this? It's just updating what we already have to the language that we have. Who decided we needed to update it? Put my name on it. Okay. I know that there is a hard time getting some people to not live in their trailers and not park them in the middle, you know, in front of the houses and in the front yards, and things of that nature. Council did want to uh, update ordinances, different ordinances. <clears throat> so that's kind of where we started. We started, I can't remember what the first one was. Nuisance one. So. You know, it's just an ongoing, ongoing, ongoing. So. But you've only and had complaints about two houses, right? Okay, so we've two got, houses. Um, and everybody has to change the rules in mind? Enough discussion, or do we want to discuss more? I think this is obviously going to get pushed out for later wow. meetings or whatever. Um, council, there's a hand up in the audience. Oh. Do you wish to address it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It's in there. laughs> if this has been on the book since 48, when I've been asking for a long time on the people across the street living in, this, in their campers, just in the street, you said there is nothing on the books that helps you move them along down the road. And now he's saying that he's seen this in the yeah. back when and yeah, on. but I mean you also sent me a permit from 13 saying that I still had chickens there. So I mean how long have you been reading permits on shit that happened for 40 years in this town and yet still don't want to do anything on your how many years have you been working here? We try to do what we can. No, you're only trying to do what you can on people that are on. Okay, we're not going back and forth. Chris, is there any more to your complaint? Well, if it's on the books, then why haven't you started on the stuff that needs to be cleaned up? Not white wolves camper that's in a clean, nice section. And and what makes you think that we haven't? They haven't moved. So exactly. It, so, so it's it's someone so, saying you're not going to tell me what. So it's it's we're just trying as far as just kind of you're just coming after more of the honest people. Exactly. No, exactly. No. Yes. Because honest ones aren't doing it either. Mm -hmm. Council, there's another hand up. Chris, 167 I, may have been received. I'm one of the houses that don't have a driveway. <laughs> Are you gonna set up and designate an area that can be used for our thieves then? The way I look at it, it's my property. What's on my property shouldn't bother anybody. As long as it's kept clean. That's the thing. Okay, so now we're moving to uh, B, removal of personal and or abandoned property in the right of way or on town public property. I'm sorry. Uh, it's just a one page thing. I had I had another thought and I couldn't remember to start talking. Sorry. Um, what about combine derby weekend when everybody has their family over staying in the RVs out, you know, parked around the yard and all that? Why do we have to come in ahead of time and pay fifteen dollars for a permit for our friends to come and join us for combine derby, which has really technically been around for a very long time and we've never made people pay for anything. We don't even annex the Lions Club in the town so that we get any money from the event. 
to help with the town and all the stuff that's, you know, the people that come here and through here. And, um, they have this and there's, there's permits that they sell for out there, but, you know, the town doesn't have anything. And now with this, if you wanted to put it in this way, are you really expecting everybody to come into town hall before the next council meeting and say, hey, Aunt Susie's coming with her RV. Can I pay a price to have her be able to stay for the Conway Derby weekend? Um, I, I mean, there's, that's a big town deal. There's, there's, there's no price. A, it's just to let people know that how come that's there when it shouldn't be there. Yeah. And actually, we have had people come in to say, my mother in law is coming. Can she sit? Yeah. Whatever, so it's just There's a couple of people that, that yeah. do that out of courtesy, which is really great. But when you have family coming over for the town's biggest event of the year, and you got to go out of your way to, to make a permit request, there's no out of the way. Well, yeah, you got to come down to town hall, you got to fill it out, you got to wait for the council meeting, you got to wait for the council to approve it. I mean, if you're gonna do something like that, it should be exempt during Conflict Derby weekend well, because of the. It. That. Because just our say town, that. yeah, just say that. This is mm -hmm. something that our town has done for a very long time. It's our event. It's when people bring all their families here, and just of course, that. they don't all fit in your house. <laughs> so that's, that's, just say that. Write that down, and all right, we'll get it. So is Henry going to drive around and check and yeah, see who's? Yeah. 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 When you get to the permit, you put it in the window of the RV or the motor home, and that's. And what are you going to do to the people who didn't put a permit in there? That would be up to uh, the wording of whatever you want to say here. It's all working. It's done in most other towns this way. It so is no not. Other towns. It is not. Okay, Denise, thank you for your input. Well, this is um, ridiculous. Are we moving on? Yeah, we're moving on. Thank you. <laughs> you want to go home? <laughs> got a date. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> it's the one page or not. Did we discuss the one pager? No. So we're on the one pager. Yeah, okay. okay, so I know that I was at a meeting when this was spoken to before um, in the audience. And it said property owners responsible to remove whatever's dumped on the town right away in front of their house. And I said that I didn't dump it there. Somebody drove by and dumped their crap in the town right of way. It's the town's right of way. Why am I the one that's going to get fined? Why am I the one that has to clean up somebody else's mess? Now, if I went and put something out there, yeah, it's on me, but. If something gets dumped in the middle of the night because somebody else didn't want to have to rent a dumpster. I mean, I rented the dumpster and the next morning woke up to there being somebody's burnt up refrigerator in it. But <laughs> um, how do we not injure or damage people in this town and somebody else has dumped crap on their property that has town right away, which what do you do? <laughs> so that means that if something is dumped on this piece of property, not by that person, the whole town pays to clean it up. That's what it means. Yeah. Because it, means. it shouldn't be a penalty against the property owner because somebody chose to dump their stuff on the, the gravel part <laughs> next to their house. <laughs> Right. And then it's to stop people from doing that. What's going to stop <laughs> Mr. Cracker from dumping shit in front of my house if he was going to do it either way? If I have to it's, pay for it or if, I, if the town has to pay for it, he's still going to do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, that's yeah. not, it's not going to make a difference. If I, pay for, if I have to clean it up or the town has to clean it up, it's not going to keep. Mr. Whatever you want to call them, dump crap in front of my house if that's what they choose to do. You know what I'm saying? They don't know if I'm having to do it myself or can't pay for it. They don't care. Obviously. You know what I'm saying? 
know what I mean? I mean, a lot of yes. times. I mean, and I'm not, I don't mean to say me, but I'm just throwing yeah. an example out there because it's, it's not a Well, when you have somebody move out of a house, they leave all their crap. Unfortunately, and they're responsible. Right, that's what it really does. Or an eviction. Right. Right. If somebody's evicted, the, the landlord throws it in the street. Could we make some language that applies to that? Right. You know what I mean? That makes it specific. Not just a blanket statement that if there's junk on the private on your the on the town's right away in front of your house, you're responsible for it. Because that's just punishing the wrong you know, the wrong entity because you wake up in the morning and there it is. You don't know who left it there, but the okay. town wants you so to So just throwing it. this out. Yeah, I'm throwing I, this out. I, I am a landlord. Yeah. And I have a house that I have, uh, it's been vacated. And um, I put their belongings out because I want to clean the house. Yeah. Okay. So we have a special language ordinance that is just for me, landlord. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I mean, okay, so somebody you rented to and they leave all their junk on the, <laughs> but on the ground. But I, front. I as landlord and I as the responsible landlord yeah, put it out in the street because it's not mine. Well, then you're still responsible unless, you know, they no, go No, he's just got them saying that it's the town. No, because it's in your house. It's in your house. I just, I'm just, I'm If you could make the language to, you know. That's why. Because, you know, you always take on that. That kind of a nightmare if you're renting right. to people. But I'm, you're missing my point. You're having an ordinance or language specifically for landlords. Yes. I thought you were said. suggesting that. No, I was explaining. Explain the word game. Okay, so is that enough? Yep, one more doesn't have. We can do a C. All right, so council, um, see, you've got oh, an ordinance uh, regulation and abatement of unsafe, unfit, and unsanitary dwellings, structures, uh, or premises. And um, it's already got red notes on it, uh, italicized, so that's kind of language that was added after. I've added that since you got the original one. Yeah. From, from previous suggestions. Things that didn't seem to be explained. So the red is your new language that came from previous okay. meetings. I have a little bit of a hard turn here with length of time or any particular state of mind of the owner of the person. How do you know what the state of mind is? Right. That's on the front page, about a six <coughs> line up, seven. Oh, first paragraph, last sentence. Yeah. No, it's the sixth line up would be in the length of time or any particular state of mind. And what has been said before, all of these are an accumulation of about a hundred different towns across the state. That was a question. Um, and their language and what they, they are doing. So how many had police departments to um, take care of these laws? So if you're considering going into someone's home, it requires a warrant, just so you know. I 
I think we had a little bit of talk about that, of who would do that position, what kind of training was necessary, or um, position in the county, or right. who has the authority. And, uh, ordinance 216 states that uh, the building official of the town of, of the county of Adams will take care of all things like that. We have a building official? That would be That's the county. The inspector. Okay. The building official. Okay. It would be county. Right. Yeah. So Adams County Field Plan. Field Plan. Field Plan. Field Plan. With the, the zoning ordinance 216, I think it is, states that we follow all the different building codes, federal ones, enforced by building official. Building official. The county of Adams. I mean, the county of Adams. Yeah. Anything else strikes your eyeballs? Have you talked with the building official? And are they helping you with Somewhat. Oh, yeah. Okay. The new fellow is just very good. He's come down twice already and straightened out some things. And, you know, oh, good. Right. That's nice. Because the building uh, inspector for the county is now the code enforcement officer for the county. Okay. They're not incorporated. So how is he going to overcome the not incorporated parts? We are incorporated, so he can't come into town to do that. Not that, but he, but he takes care of the building, the building codes for our town. And so he why? He can't do nuisances and things like that. So why hasn't he done anything with Guy's house? A burned out house? It's not habitable. Right. So why hasn't he done something with that? Because we don't have the right. And he ordinance. said that we don't have the right ordinances? No, he didn't say we didn't have the right ordinances. He said I should follow through with what I have to do. What does that mean? You mean follow updating the, the follow ordinances? The or, follow the ordinance we had mm -hmm. and turn it over to the attorney and then they decide how where they want to go from there, which is what's been done. As far as Guy's house, you've already turned it over yes. to the attorney. Mm -hmm. I'm asking if he's going to do anything with Guy's house, why are you changing the language for him to do something so else? He has not gone into the house yet. Because the attorney has to get a warrant, probably. Right. <laughs> it's, it's a long, drawn out process. Once again, the fire department did not, at the time of the fire, rope it off to say that it was unfit. And that would have been a lot, I don't know, easier, quicker, quicker, uh, clean hands, whatever. But the fire department did not know that, that they have that capability. And so that's, that's what we're going to try and get things, know what what can be done in a, uh, like a house fire like that. Okay? All right. So anything else as far as language or thoughts and terms? Okay. So... Uh, council, uh, item B for unfinished business is tank water users. I would like for you to get the um, long sheet. <clears throat> and um, the attached ordinance 2304, the paragraph says a, an ordinance establishing the uh, guidelines for the selling or the distribution of the town of land's non-potable water for projects outside of normal use, which includes but 
not limited to local farmers, the Adams County Public Works Department and the local fire departments and or any other entities, municipalities. And that was passed in uh, June of 2023. So you can read, that's old news except to uh, um, Jim and Jamie. But uh, the long sheet, I would like a group effort for the council to go, these are um, all the tank water users that our customers have been customers for the uh, uh, well sets. And I would like for you to tell me, uh, we will be writing letters to all of these customers, informing them of the new prices and if they are allowed to purchase. So I would like for you to tell me, or Barbara, um, who on this list, who are our current customers that you are going to uh, allow to um, get water? Which, which names are not allowed to put that way? Adams County Fire Department, definitely. <laughs> Was being funny. <laughs> Do we actually um, keep track of the fire department's water? Coming from where? Out of the hydrants? No. No, I mean, those six. If they write it down. Okay. But we don't build them for water. Yes. We do. We build them for water. Just like everybody else. Yeah. I can agree with you. And just to refresh your memories, Council, um, the hydrant that is out there at Pacific Pride, that is used uh, when the fire is in that direction. Um, they come in closer to that hydrant to uh, put things fill back up and then turn around and go out. And that's not needed. No. But we know the size of the truck and we know how many times that the truck comes in. So it's kind of a guesstimate. Okay, so going down the list, can you just give me some, a, a group effort? Yes, no? Adams County group um, for, I don't know, I guess Ruben was the one that was the head. Oh yeah, that's supervisor name, right? Is he? He was, yeah, he retired. Oh, okay, so that's see, that's an old. It's DJ now. Okay, so that scratch Ruben's name, so that would be um, that. That would be your Adams County Public Works. Right. So that's a yes. They they will be allowed. Could you remind me of who Segnar is? Uh, Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Yes. So my question is, is as you guys are going through this list, you're reading through this list of pre-approval, non-approval, or whatnot, and she just mentioned the well, the hydrant out there. Um, just be mindful that last year nobody was really aware of it until I brought it to attention. I mean, some people might have been aware of it. But the train uses that constantly, and all they, the time filling up. And they meter, they have their own meter, they have their own backflow, and they report it to the office. And something that Doug had said, but that's the thing, when we have these fires and stuff, and there was supposed to be non-potable water, but we were no on water, it would have been very easy for them to bring in a team for those that have like animals who have pumps or something down, per se, and Supply some water, non puddled water. I mean, even if people were using their bathrooms, they could got, you know, some amount of water to flush with, even, you know, or something. Um, I think tip for tat, but, you know, when I talked to Burlington about something like that, they said it was really up to what CDC does and 
enforcement and all of that stuff. And what can be done and what can't be done as far as even a car on track with water in it. Hmm. But this is a suggestion. I mean, oh, no, that's good. They're pretty approval not That's good information. Mean, yeah, they might have their own meter, but that is still water being wrong. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't know if you're aware, maybe this very council voted to ban the selling of water to outside entities. I've never seen it noted anywhere in the ordinance. The ordinance is what I read. Establishing the guidelines for the selling or the distribution of the town of Lands okay, non potable yeah. water for projects outside of normal use, which includes but not limited to local farmers, the Adams County Public Works Department, the local fire department, and or any other entities, okay. municipalities. The ones we can't get away from are the clear local agency agreements that we have like, with the county and one of those kind of We don't scratch their back, they don't scratch ours. <laughs> and what is okay. normal use? So can we go down the list? <clears throat> what if there, so is this list just from people that bought water last year? And the year before, and the year before, and the year before. Okay, so it's just the, the same people, no, nobody knew was coming in or anything. Just, just. Well, who was outside of normal use? Isn't that the first line on that ordinance? For projects outside of normal use. So the farmers aren't using it for projects. But it says, <laughs> which includes the not limited to local farmers. For but what's normal use? normal use? That would be like, like windmills and solar, solar farms and stuff like that. So farming. why are all the farmers' names on that list? Oh my gosh. Well, does it Can mean... we go down the list and, and uh, see who uh, is not allowed to You don't have to, to read them. Well I'm just no, no. throwing it out there. It just, it means for anything outside of regular farm use. Like, for the roads to the... Your road know. construction. Right. Okay. Farmers don't so usually Adams do road County, construction. Is that a yes or a no? What was it? Are you going to, to say no? They also get water from the river. When they need lots of water. So these are allowed. Yes. Okay. Uh, B and P Farms. Yes. PJ Hyder. Chris Olson. Yes. Okay. Can we just go down and, and just ask questions about the ones that we don't understand? I need to know which names are not allowed okay. to use well six. What is TOL? Oh, Chris. Count of land. Chris <laughs> Olson. <laughs> Nope. It does all have address. Ken Strohmeyer. They've got your name on there. Did you ever join venture? Or use Excuse me. I have my hand up. I have a question. Did you ever use it outside of normal use? Well, actually, I have a name. Why did you It had a lot to do with the water being trucked out of Adams County and out of Lake. Because there were people that were taking truckloads out of Washington County and trucking them
it's a farmer. I don't yeah. remember his name. Is that close? Like, none of those people yeah, use a, anything really out of normal. Old, I don't understand job. why they're on there. Yeah. It's the entire is, is their farm or whatever within Adams County or, or is that, do they farm out of Adams County? Do they in Odessa? So is yeah, there in Odessa? Yeah, his yeah. address is Odessa. Yeah, but we haven't had a water restriction.
Houston. Randy Wicks lives out at Baby Lane, Houston. Uh, Weed Incorporated, that's at the end, James Wall. DW Excavating, that's who we had, um, Lucher, who was street water line construction. That's that's just, just project. That's a project. Uh, and I don't know who this is. MGD Farms, and Garrett was the one that always signed up. Farmington? Holy crap, that's a photo. That's Colfax. That might have been just the, account, <laughs> the address of the account. Yeah. Good question on that Because if we're not sure. Yeah, I don't, so I didn't recognize the name. Uh, Cameron Jinks. Your chance, sorry. Um, and I think that he is a farmer east of town. It's a very old account. Um, east is that way, right? I say some of these might not even get um, water from us anymore, but they're out of play. Yeah, way out there. So he's for cow water. He's okay. What's that? He has the cows up above the line. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. thank you. He's right for cow water. Okay, so he's got the land that's up this direction as well. Okay. His cousin is the one that has over the ground. Oh, oh, I know the name Jake now because he's Basin. Yeah, Basin. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Write that down. Okay, Winkler, that was a construction company. Uh, FEMA, FEMA Project. FEMA Project Streets. Um, Avista Utilities. For their tank water. Probably for planting the poles. Fire suppression. <laughs> uh, Bowtie Farms, Brian Borth. Double Up is still Dan Galberth up above. Same address, yes. So that's a repeat. Uh, David Nissen, Lions Club. Yes. Okay, CCS, that's the Vactor truck that has come through periodically, staying near culverts. And do we absorb that water because they're doing the service for the town, or do we charge them for that? They're charged. Anybody that's on this is charged. Okay, so they come in and then they're charging that. Yeah. What is that? Contract deal. Yeah. Looks like something used in a project. I can't remember what it was. I'm guessing they put the steel, were they the ones that put the steel poles in or just did all the pole change outs? Oh, they, maybe. They changed out a bunch of power poles around town. Maybe. Uh, Double J Excavating was another project. street uh, repair. <laughs> Phillips, Wendy Hill, Reed Phillips. It's still address, but he's got land, land, so that's okay. Center line drilling. I don't know if they're a well driller or just drilling. That's not a contract. Okay, Sean Bell. No. <laughs> Sorry, you gotta have a sense of humor, yes. Uh, Columbia Drain. Yes. Northwest Ag Crop Dusters, and they are using the airport. Okay. Dick Eichler. Uh, Roger Smart. Yes. Lynn Fire Department. Twice? Nope. Twice. Oh, there was Adam's camp. Yeah. And it's, then it's a different. <laughs> um, and I don't know why they have two different uh, accounts. Brian Board is again. You aren't part of it? Is yeah, I was just saying we don't have the city fire technically the city. Oh, God. Fire like we used to. It's all under the county. Yeah, got it. Brian Borth, Bowtie Farms. And a couple of different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Randy Coulomb Farms. Mm -hmm. And BNSF Fire Prevention. 
Man. So that's the only time. The railroad that they gets railroad away with it because they say they're doing it for fire, fire prevention all the time. Um, <laughs> yeah. Is that and what they normally get the water for? Yes. Yeah. And, and uh, something that I've learned is that um, behind Lions Club building yeah. and the railroads got their little building. Yeah. There's a fire hydrant that is specifically theirs, so they they have that um, all set up for their stuff. So and it's metered mm -hmm. and backflowed and all that stuff. I remember. remember it being behind some of it, but. Okay, all right. So but they also use the one out at the other end. Of town. Yeah. Um, letters will be going out and letting everyone know the price increase. Okay. Um, new business. Council, please look at the animal permits. Um, there's two of them. Uh, 111 East 5th Street for pins and one at 601 North Vulcan. Huh? Sorry, Wes. What did I say? That's because I wrote down the end. Okay. Um, chickens and uh, goats and ponies. Oh, my. You're stocking a pet farm. <laughs> the petting zoo. Yeah. So, approval for both of those all at once or each individual, whichever way you want to do. Let's do individuals and we can ask questions. Okay. Since I don't have any. Oh, there it is. I found it. I was looking. Can we do it that way? Yeah. Okay. Chicken tractor? Mm -hmm. It's a tube. They track. <laughs> yeah, well, John Deere drive. Yeah. Right. It's a, I want to see that. It's a, a gauge that you can. So I'm looking at the one here um, with the goats and the pony. There's three goats in one. If I read these correctly. Yes. We have people who get so bad as big as a Labrador. Okay, so you said in each individual, let's tackle the um, 111 East 5th Street chickens. I make a motion yes. we approve the hen. Second that. Laura and Mike. Okay, moved and seconded to uh, allow 11 East 5th Street to um, permit their chickens. All in favor say aye. 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 And any opposed? Motion carries. And evidently that was their first time. Okay. okay. Next council, 601 West Fulton. I can motion we accept all the goes. How much acreage yeah. are they supposed to have? And the Shetland pony. Well, How I much mean, acreage? Have we have That's not zone for AG. Yes, it is. But how That's, much acreage is each animal supposed to have? My, I live in an agricultural zone. Yeah. What's that? That's agricultural. Oh, it yes. say, oh. It says recent. There are requirements for horses and, and the goats and all that for acreage. The first acreage. The first one. One acre for the first one and one acre for every two after. How many acres do you have out there? About four. Okay. okay, I've got Mike and Jim. Yep. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the um, animal permits at 601 West Bolton. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? What you get? Ooh, okay, Council Pink. Yeah, 
pink sheet. All right, this is uh, to um, council members and myself. It's from Dan Rimmick. The purpose of this memo is to provide a project update and to request consideration of a change order for the Well 7 Rehabilitation Project. As you know, since September 2022, Well 7 has had production issues that made it unusable as a municipal water source. The Well 7 Rehabilitation Project was initiated to clean the well and restore production capacity. Field work began on December 15th. 2023 with removal of the well house shell, followed by the removal of the motor and pump column. The cleaning operation followed with injection of a clay dispersant and installation of uh, a jetter, injector, sorry, uh, pump and more brushes. Following the brushing phase, an impulse generator tool was inserted which helps to dislodge particles on the well board, particularly in areas beyond the reach of the brushes. This is all part of the standard cleaning process. During the impulse generation phase, it appears that loose rocks in an uncased section of the well came loose and collapsed in on the borehole, causing a blockage at approximately 620 feet below ground. The contractor attempted to loosen the blockage for two days with the equipment on hand, but made no significant progress. The blockage is estimated to be 20 to 30 feet thick. After consulting with our well specialist, Dr. Lindsay, it appears the only viable option is to bring in a full-size drill, yeah, drill rig to reopen the borehole. This is work that is outside of the scope of the original project, and so a change order must be authorized to continue this work. The blockage has sealed off sealed off the deep water bearing zone of the well and prevents reinstallation of the well pump. Well 8 <coughs> is currently the only active source for the town and is showing signs of decline as it has been used exclusively for over a year. Well 7 needs to be returned to service as soon as possible to ensure reliability in the water system. Therefore, it is recommended that the additional work described in change order number one be authorized. And the company is Snyder, Snyder Water Services, and they um, have pulled out some of their uh, equipment and they are waiting for approval from the council. Um, little side note there. Uh, and I, at last, conversation that I halfway listened to was uh, their equipment was still stuck. Uh, they had two pieces. One they did get out, but one is still stuck. So anyway, um, the second page is change order number one. And um, uh, it essentially says the same thing as, as Dan's thing, that it's 600 20 feet down uh, blockage. Uh, cable tool drill rig is needed to drill through and clear the blockage. The change order includes a lump sum price to prepare, mobilize, and set up a cable tool drill rig. Um, and then they've got hourly rate for time actually work to clear the blockage shall be paid full, will start up, shall be full paid for crew and equipment. And um, right now there's only been two guys uh, working at it. And so that you can see that um, the change order is $35,100. Um, so the new contract price for the town of Lynn, well number seven, 
rehabilitation project, including this change order, number one, is $334,087.20. Change in the contract time goes to 30 days, and total is 55 days. Uh, third page is just a signature to approve. Uh, the last page is from Snyder Water Services saying the same thing, $32,500. That doesn't match. This one says $35,100. Oh. No, 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 no. Back up. Go oh, back to, up there. Go to your second I got page. It. I see it. You see it? Thirty-two five. And then the tax. Tax. Jeez. Where is it coming from out of the budget? Yeah. All right. So this original bid base of the contract price, where is that coming from? The monies, what monies are being used to pay for that? Um, that is the Public Works Board uh, loan and grant and um, some ARPA money. How much of the ARPA money? I don't know what it is now. The hundred. We budgeted the total carried over was one hundred forty-four thousand. That's what we have left of the hundred seventy-two or whatever it was. But yeah, but the grant and the loan is what you're saying for the two hundred ninety-eight thousand is from where? Public Works Board. Public Works Trust Fund. Or Trust Fund. Whatever words that you want to say. That's what I want to say. <laughs> um, and how much was grant? How much was loan? Oh, I don't remember. Um, I don't remember. Was there a percentage? 75 25. Was 75 25? I think so. 75 grant? Or 75 loan, 25 grant? I thought she said two hundred seventy-five thousand for grant and twenty-five thousand for a loan. If I remember, I can get that information for you. Later. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you you mentioned the other money, the two seventy-five grant and twenty-five thousand. What does that stand for? Oh, I said it American backwards. American Rescue. <laughs> Twenty-five thousand is the grant. Go in. It's going. Oh, it hasn't been all right. Is there yet? So, this original base contract is all public work trust fund loan and grant. Loan and grant. So then the change order would be out of the ARPA. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? Good. Yeah. And we have a hundred and forty something thousand in the ARPA. Mm -hmm. None of that's spent. Or promise to something else. No, it's promised to well set. Okay. So we could use that for the change order? Yes. For the next meeting, could you guys have that information about the public works trust fund loan and grant? Let me understand what's going yeah, on you, that. You aren't around for that, so no, that's why I'm saying. Yeah. Um and then I make a motion that we uh, approve change order number one for $35,100 to come out of the ARPA COVID funding for Well 7. Second that. Okay, it's moved and seconded to uh, approve the change order number one. Uh,
the 13th month of 2023, dated from 1231 2023 to 1231 2023. The amount of $18,926.81. Another question. Uh, it looks like some of these we kind of approved last month. Those are pending. That's what we do. We have a pending list. Yeah. And then these are the actual warrants that are sent, checked, mailed. Okay. So. So essentially, you've already approved them. Yep. This is just the, the actual warrant check register. Except the bottom one for a drug test for a new employee that didn't happen until at least the 16th, right? Why would that be part of last year? The last one. Was that from... Was that from the uh, other employee that was going to start working here and didn't end up working here? Is that appropriate to be added into the 13th month? Or should we change that to, to reflect the correct date? Mm -hmm. It should, but I don't, the problem is I'm not sure how to do it when it's hard to take that. I don't know how to get rid of my own to see if I'm Well, why did you add it to 23 would be the question. It was a mistake on that. Well, the next check that you see on the 17th, yeah. 21135, yeah. it was just one right after the other there. From one, one thirteenth month to the next day. So, do you want to uh, uh, approve everything except for that one check for that thirteenth month? Well, if she said that everything from twenty twenty three is all completely closed out. How can we change something from that? Are we able to, or is that not going to be a possibility? Without contacting you from your government. It is something I would have to be um, But all of these are work pending, so they're, they're already approved from before. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If we can check that out. Closeout's supposed to be open until the end of January, isn't it? Okay. So, what date was that done? Well, you said that you were going to... Yeah, but you, we, didn't, we didn't get talk about it until the night before, so... <laughs> So the 16th was when you said you'd buy it, you would ask him. That was his first day, yeah. He started. But he had to be the resident. But that's why it was 
fall under the so it would not. I guess oh, that's that it was. technically it would, would, it fall would fall under that date. date. Not because it was done okay. in the okay. yeah. that, that, that. Okay. No. We're good. Yep. Make a motion, Marie. No, Mike's got the motion. Oh, did he? Yeah. Okay. And Jan's got second. Gosh, I didn't hear. Long time, <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's moved and seconded to approve the 1231 to uh, 2023 to 1231 of 2023 for that 13th month in the dollar amount of $18,926.81. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. I move to approve payment of warrants from 2024, yep. dated from 1 1 2024 to 1 22 2024, in the amount of $128,242.62. Okay, moved and seconded to approve January 1 to January 22nd. Of 2024 and the dollar amount $128,242.62. All in favor say aye. Aye. And any opposed? Motion carries. We do have a question at the last meeting. We asked about the two contract invoices from Kelly Connect. Yes, one was for overages on the copier and one was the base rate. Thank you. Normally they send one invoice for both amounts, yeah. and for some reason they sent two separate invoices this last time. Yeah. All right, I move to approve the pending invoices dated January 5th, 2024 to January 22nd, 2024, in the amount of $4,654.87. Okay, my turn. You don't want to talk to you. Everybody, there's two sheets there you got to sign. Okay, so do you want me to continue or do you want to do the signatures first? Okay, can, I, can I ask what Sledge Judge is? It seems like something I should know, but I'm not recalling it. The big stick that they put down in the sewer thing. Oh. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Did you guys go? Not yet. Yeah. They're signing. Oh. <laughs> Sounds 
like it's next in line. So that would be the priority as far as the mechanics go. Um, as far as town goes, I would like to have uh, things get cleaned up, uh, everybody have a smile on their face instead of a scowl, um, and that's, that's hard. And we have uh, uh, some houses that are up for sale, uh, buildings that are up for sale, so that is a plus, I think. And business or commerce, or do you have a um, I think that that is a chamber of commerce question, as well as uh, an ACDC, Adams County Development Council mm -hmm. process. point out that with all the moisture that we've had lately, um, here next week, I would imagine be a good time to grade the alleyways while there's moisture around, but of course you have to wait till it won't sink. You know, you want the truck to be able to drive down the alleyways, but it would be an ideal time to do the grading on, you know, any of the town's gravel roads and the alleyways because of the moisture that's in the roads right now. You know, it would work better and be more effective. And you wouldn't have to use town water to wet down the alleys when you do it if you do it during a drier time of year. So if you can spare them for a few hours a day or one of them in a truck to pull that box scraper that we have, it might be a really great time. Uh, she reminded me of something. So now that we have this... Um, New guy, or we, and I realized that we had some snow and stuff. And I was glad to hear that they were able to use the new snow plow that we invested in last year. Yeah. It sounds like it worked pretty cool. good. So glad to see and hear that. Um, on the side, uh, as far as flushing out the sewer systems or something, is that something hopefully we'll be able to do? Mm -hmm. You guys will be able to do that. Um, I want to finish. Oh, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I should have known. Back to, come back to me. <laughs> Won't always be like this. It's all good. It's all good. Okay. Um, I would like to make a, a recommendation to set our clerk treasurer up for success in her, in her job. Um, I watched a few things, and I've seen some situations, and I'm requesting that you help her to get uh, professional training in writing the meeting minutes. That's available through MRSC, um, all those groups, the three different ones. Um, you can get, she can take the trainings and it'll be helpful to her, and it'll definitely shorten up what she has to type out. Um, Customer service, they have some good classes on that. And then um, I think it'd be really helpful to take a de-escalization class or, or how to de-escalate a situation because you deal with lots of people with different emotions and, and different issues. And I just think it would help her to be a little more successful if she was given those training opportunities know, kind of to improve the professional development portion of her job. So if she could do that, I think, I just think it would be better for her personally and for the town as a whole. So that, that's a recommendation that I would uh, I like to see to help her. I recommend that if there's issues like that, uh -huh. that it's done in private. So thank you. Um, this was just suggested classes to help her in her professional okay, development. Okay, and then you went on and on. But, <laughs> so the, it is my job yes, it is. to make the statements if I feel something needs to be addressed. 
and it was done with kindness. It wasn't done in angst okay. or to be nasty. Um, the uh, public comment, are you still wanting to? Yeah. Um, okay, Richard. We're talking about cleaning things up. That trailer out by the gas station, the first thing you see when you come into this house is awful. It can't be tipped back over now because someone stole the axles off of it. <laughs> I mean, how long are we going to let it lay there? I mean, it's been there for months. Or is that county? Or is that out of county? Henry, didn't you, when I talked to you about that, didn't you say no. something that it's in nobody's jurisdiction or? No, it is something on like that. Pacific Pride's property. And we are in contact with the owners of the Pacific Pride air, um, land there. Okay. And they are trying to be in contact with the Sheriff's Department as well as um, trying. There's no VIN number that we can find to come in and, and uh, take away uh, finding a scrapper to get it taken care of is something else. So and does the railroad have any responsibility? No. It's on their right of way. So the 200 feet of the track. No, it's on the property of Pacific Ride. It's in the middle of the street. Well, then it moved. <laughs> they rolled it over into the street. It's in there. Yeah, it's dead center oh, of wow. your street. Huh. Oh. And they moved it. Okay. Well, thank you. When Meat Spain came and took the axle off of it, it moved oh. a little more. But <laughs> when Hunter and Hayden Stone loaded it on a trailer and smashed the other trailer, they pushed it back off right in the middle of your street. Oh. If you guys go out there, it's dead center in the middle of the street. Oh. It used to be off to the side. When they first dropped it, okay. I have not been out there since it snowed. So, if, yeah, it, no, it was if there it's in the street, over. street, it well, then we need snow. to do something with it. Was it. it was way before snow. When I was in the middle of the I'm street. saying I haven't been out there. Oh, okay. uh, um, but the sheriff's oh, wow. department, um, you know, when it first was there, we contacted them and. and uh, uh, I don't know, we kind of had a dead end on the VIN number, and then the owner, they're trying to find the owner, and it's just one, one thing right after the other, so. All right, so that's on the list. Can I have one thing more? Okay. I've been doing some research. I was talking about um, the possibility of getting some storage tanks for our water, and there are three places that I have found. Um, I've sent emails and haven't gotten anything back. The largest tanks that I've been able to locate are two, uh, 20,000 gallons. They're $40,000 a piece. That does not include shipping. One of these guys is from over on the East Coast. The other, they just give me a, an 800 number. That does not include hooking anything up. Um, because it's just the tank. What's that? It's just the tank. It's just the tank. Um, and they're a plastic, which my recommendation would be to bury them for these sharpshooters that <laughs> like slow moving objects um, to, to protect them from holes. So, you know, between the shipping and the connecting of the um, tanks together and with the other tank and so forth. It's going to be, even at that expense, it's still going to be cheaper than drilling another well or drilling a deeper well. Um, three places that I looked at is called, one is called Buckeye Fabricating. Uh, another one is National Tank Outlet. And the third is Norwesco. So if anybody you know has a desire to can you spell that last one? Nor what? N-O-R-W-E-S-C-O. Thank you. Are those approved for municipal water? Yes. Systems? Yes. Thank you. Okay, good to know. And that's the copy to give to you all. Give your address. Oh, give your phone number. They're on the internet. Okay, there's 
there's no one else. Second. Okay, go to second to adjourn. All in favor say yay yay. Yay yay. And